anyone who's been subscribed to me for any length of time will know that from time to time I do like to make videos about sparring rumors things which have allegedly happened to certain fighters in sparring now some people get frustrated when I make these kind of videos they often say that sparring is irrelevant what happens in sparring is irrelevant it has no bearing on what takes place in actual real fights and I always turn around to them and disagree sometimes isolated incidents in sparring have no bearing about what takes place in a professional boxing ring during a fighter's career or in a specific fight but other times it does have a significance and a good example a recent example would be Errol Spence when he beat Kell Brook I've touched on this before but not really with regards to sparring rumours specifically now with Errol Spence from very early on in his career in his pro career there were rumours coming out of the gyms that Errol Spence was giving a lot of the top professionals including Floyd Mayweather Adrian Broner um, Lamont Peterson and so on and so forth that he was giving a lot of these top professionals a very, very hard time in sparring indeed when he was, you know, a very inexperienced pro with just a couple, couple of pro fights under his belt. Now, some people dismissed that, particularly the Kell Brook fans going into the Brook fight. They dismissed all that. Oh, it's just sparring. It means nothing. No, it did mean something. It meant that from a mental point of view, Errol Spence was never going to be intimidated by Kell Brook's home crowd. The partisan crowd, the people booing him. He was never going to freeze on the occasion. That was never going to happen. Why? Because this wasn't an isolated incident with regards to Errol Spence and sparring. No, there were multiple reports over a prolonged period of time of Errol Spence bashing up these top professionals in sparring. One of them that he at least, I don't want to say he bashed him up, but he certainly gave him a very, very tough time, according to reports, is Floyd Mayweather. This young professional with just a couple fights under his belt went into Floyd Mayweather's own gym and tried to knock Floyd Mayweather out in sparring. He didn't go in there in awe of Mayweather. He didn't go in there and get starstruck like a lot of young fighters would oh Floyd you're my hero this that and the no 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 he went into Floyd's gym and tried to put it on him that kind of mentality is not the kind of mentality that freezes against Kell Brook at Bramall Lane it's just not this is why if you were paying attention because there was a lot of I saw a lot of Kell Brook fans saying oh Spence is going to freeze on the occasion He's not ready for this. He's not ready for Kell Brook. What do you mean he's not ready? The kind of guy who's going to march into the Mayweather gym and try to bash up Floyd Mayweather is not the kind of guy that's going to be intimidated by Kell Brook or Kell Brook's fans or going to the UK to fight at Bramall. He's not going to be intimidated, man. These are the little things that you can pick up on if you're paying attention, which tell you a lot about a fighter's psychological makeup. I mean, those persistent sparring rumours about Errol Spence, they didn't tell me that Errol Spence was going to beat Kell Brook. No. But they at least told me that he weren't going to freeze. Why I thought he would beat Kell Brook, and I guess why other people out there who picked Errol Spence to beat Brook, why we thought he would win was more down to stylistic reasons. And also... To some degree, Kell Brook coming down in weight, the eye injury, so on and so forth, the psychological scars from the Golovkin fight, that too. But yeah, the sparring stuff told us that Errol Spence mentally is a very, very strong, confident, self-assured character. Not the kind of guy that's going to freeze. So it did tell us something going into that fight and just about Errol Spence as a fighter in general. So with that being said, my sparring rumor 
stories will continue. <laughs> uh, video, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue doing those kind of videos. I find them interesting. At the end of the day, any little bit of information that you can get about a fighter, about what goes on behind the scenes, how he performed in sparring, amateur fight, so on and so forth. It helps you build a picture of the fighter. You get as much background information on him as you can. It helps you build a picture of him, a psychological profile. And also, it gives you an insight into what he's capable of as a fighter or what he's not capable of. Now, some sparring rumors turn out to be untrue and you have to be mindful of that. Some sparring rumors turn out to be true. And obviously, there are certain circumstances in sparring i mean you could be sparring multiple different people if you're the, you know the 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 main fighter whose training camp it is you could be sparring multiple different sparring partners they're only getting in and doing three or four rounds with you but you're staying in the ring for 12 or 15 rounds so under those circumstances a guy might get the better of you because you're not fresh because you've been sparring six rounds and then he gets in fresh he might drop you he might hurt you he might outbox you that's possible is that significant no because it wasn't a level playing field it was sparring designed to test you when you're depleted when you're tired so on and so forth so me i take all these things into account and i try and get as much information on sparring if there are sparring rumors on them as possible so but at the same time there are other things, for example, a fight getting knocked out in sparring, particularly close to a fight, or a fight getting dropped in sparring close to a fight. That can have a psychological effect on a guy going in, into a professional boxing ring if he's been dropped or knocked out just a couple of weeks before his fight. Uh, an example of that would be Chad Dawson got knocked out, some say cold, by Edison Miranda just two weeks before he fought Andre Ward. How much of a psychological impact did that have on him? Because he basically quit in the Andre Ward fight after he got dropped. Yeah, when Ward dropped him, I can't remember what round that was. It was the round where the fight ended. He might, I think he was dropped earlier on in the fight as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a long time since I saw that fight. But yeah, in the round that the fight ended, he quit. Was that because he'd been knocked out in sparring a couple weeks earlier by Edison Miranda? And Edison Miranda's trainer came out and confirmed it. And by the way, Chad Dawson never denied it. So I've got no reason to believe that the Edison Miranda story is untrue. So, you know, like I say, uh, and also, I, you know, maybe a guy knocked someone out in sparring. He might fear the guy who knocked him out. He might be a bit wary of him now because he knows that guy can KO him. Then again, maybe not. Maybe there were other circumstances as to why he got dropped on that particular occasion. It varies from fighter to fighter. But as I say, it's never a bad thing to at least have the information. You need to analyze the information. You need to think about it. You need to put it in context as well as you can. But it's never a bad thing to have the information. That's why I'm interested in these kind of stories. And that's why I make videos about it. So, yeah, anyway, <laughs> just some food for thought for you there, people. Drop your comments in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out.